Hello, and welcome to the ServiceNow Ticketing Connector Template Modification Guide. In this guide, we're going to show you how to customize the, the default templates to fit your environment just right. So to start, we're going to select our ServiceNow demo instance we've already created, and we're going to click Configure. And this time, we're going to go over to the Template tab. Here you can see that we have six different templates. However, the ones we're interested in customizing are the ServiceNow Incident Create and Update, Create, Update and Close, and Create, Update and Resolve. The other three tickets really have to deal with the communication between OEM and ServiceNow and really should not be edited. So let's just select one of these and click Edit. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is to please remember to back up all your files before you edit. That way, in case you get into a point where it's just broken or you aren't happy with what the customizations, we can easily revert back to your last change. Now, as I scroll down, the first thing I wanna show you are a number of our variables that come. The first one is our action variable, which tells us whether we're in a create state, a close state, or an update state for the ticket. However, this isn't gonna be much use right now, so let's look at the other two. The first one is severity. And what severity does is it maps our OEM severity to our impact in ServiceNow. So we can see here our fatal, critical, warning, and advisory. Those are our OEM statuses. And then we give it a number based on where those are at. So fatal and critical are both ones, warning and advisory are both twos. In general, in ServiceNow, one is high, two is medium, and three is low. So in this case, let's say you wanted your warning to still be a high impact in service now. We could change this to, to a one, and now all warning tickets would also be created as high impact. You can follow the exact same thing in our priority variable, where we look at, again, in OEM, urgent, very high, high, medium, and low. If you wanted just urgent to be high impact or high priority in service now, we'll keep this as a one. But if you wanted high and very high to also, we could go through and do ones for these as well. Now let's scroll down a little bit further. The next part I wanna point out is where we get to the body. <clears throat> the body is where we send the data to the ticket and what kind of information we display. So the first one I'll highlight again is that uh, severity. We also have the priority variable. Again, these are the things we just looked at, but they're, they're based on the variable. So we're gonna send those over to ServiceNow. We then have a short description, which is basically like a title. Uh, and here's our value for that. And then we have our larger description, which contains all of this information. Um, and you can see some more detailed information like the target type and target name. And if you ever wanted to add additional details in here, you could just go in and add more details that you wanna send in the, in the description. And what that looks like again in our ServiceNow ticket, here we can see that impact and urgency that are based on our variables. We can see that short description here and the more detailed description here. Now, one thing you might notice is we have a whole bunch of categories that are either left blank or set to default, like the category. Now, if we wanted to change those, we can go back into our template and scroll down just a little bit further. You'll notice a whole bunch of categories that are commented out. For example, that category that we just looked at. If we wanted those to start displaying, we could uncomment them. And now we see that we are now sending category. Now I've manually set up one called EM incident, but maybe you wanna use a different category. And if you wanted to figure out, you know, what category do I wanna use? You can go back into ServiceNow, use the drop down, And here you can see, I already have the EM incident, but let's say we wanted to use database. If we wanted to do that, we could go back in here, delete EM incident, choose database. And now it will all, all of our tickets will be created under the database category. And you can do that for any of these different categories that are commented out. So we have the 
uh, person who it's reported to or is most affected by the incident. So we call that the caller ID. Uh, we can replace that with a user's ID. And to look at look them up, we can go into our caller and search for, through our list of callers and figure out whose name we want to put in there. We have subcategories, service names, configuration items, contact types, assignment group names, uh, the uh, who this should be assigned to, so another user. Um, if there's a parent issue, we can assign it a parent issue, a problem ID, change request, uh, if this is related to a change request or another change request, if it was caused by a specific change request. Uh, if we automatically want it to create a knowledge article once the incident is closed, we can just simply remove these brackets. And now it will create a knowledge article because this is set to true. If later you wanted to remove that, you could either comment it out or just change this to false. We'll keep it for true for now. And if there's a specific location you want to put in, uh, you can enter that field as well. So these are all disabled by default because they require a little bit of user interaction to put in the specifics of what you want. Um, but if you do have those and you know what you want for each of these fields, you can simply uncomment them and fill them out like we have with the category and with the knowledge base article down here. So let's say we wanted to save these changes, right? Because we've already updated our severity and our priority variables. We've added a category and we said that we want knowledge bases to be created uh, when the ticket's closed. So we'll click save. It'll ask to make sure we wanna save and we'll click yes. And now all future tickets that we create in OEM uh, to ServiceNow will have all of those new modifications that we just made, as long as we use the correct template, right? Uh, editing templates can be extremely powerful and let you customize this integration to work perfectly for your environment. So don't be afraid to, to get in and, and modify that a little bit. However, if you get into a point where the template's no longer working or you just don't like where it's at, you can always select the template and use the restore button up here. So instead of clicking edit, we'll click restore. And this will bring it back to the original default that shipped with the integration. So we'll click yes. And now all those changes that I just made are gone and it's back to its original state. And that is it. Thank you for listening to the ServiceNow Ticketing Connector Template Modification Guide.